Hi and welcome to Coachman Unchained. With the Australian and Malaysian Grand Prix successfully completed by both Coachman F1 drivers Charles Pick and Guido Vandergaard, this week the team have been heading back to Leefield. We caught up with one of Coachman F1 team's reserve drivers, Alexander Rossi, as he called in for a simulator session. But Alexander and Guido, Malaysia wasn't all work and no play. After a police escort to a basketball game, Alexander told us what else he got up to in the Kuala Lumpur heat. Malaysia was great. It was a fantastic event. And one of the highlights for me was um, being able to go to, to an Asian basketball game, the KL team playing against the Singapore team. Uh, it was very cool to kind of go see it. And it was also very interesting to see that there was three American players uh, between the two teams. Um, so it was kind of a great change of pace. I mean, the race weekends are normally quite stressful. And, and very structured and, and very intense and um, to kind of take a break with, with Guido especially and go hang out and just kind of be normal for, for an hour and a half, two hours, um, it was definitely one of the highlights of the weekend. All right guys, good luck tomorrow! Being in Malaysia was, was great for me. I had never been to the track before. I had been to KL in the past to do a demo actually with, with Caterham um, through the city streets, but I hadn't had the opportunity to go to the race. Um, so kind of walking the track on Thursday was the first time I was actually able to see it in person. And it's one of those tracks you play a lot kind of on, on the PlayStation, on the simulator. Um, but to actually get there and, and to walk in, the, the beauty of it actually, because it's almost in the middle of a rainforest. Um, and at times you see monkeys in the trees. And I mean, it's something that's quite different than, than your kind of normal European track. Um, so that was quite, quite cool for me. Um, and I was very surprised at actually how small it was um, compared to what you expected. Um, it was one of the more, it was the first modern track to be built. And it was a couple years ago, it was kind of this massive deal. But now that there's been so many modern tracks built since then, it's kind of surprising how small it actually is in scale to, to a place like Abu Dhabi. Um, or somewhere like Korea, for example, um, where it's just it's massive. Um, but at the end of the day, the, the weekend for us was, was, was a bit of a challenging one, um, but we knew that was always going to be the case in, in the opening rounds of the season. But I think kind of the great thing that continues to stand out to me um, about the team is the fact that everyone you know, keeps pushing forward and the motivation and the spirits are always high. And everyone kind of just wants to do the best job that they have with the tools available to them. And, and the, the views and hopes are always optimistic. And um, for me to, to kind of be in this new role and uh, have two back-to-back -back weekends was kind of um, a big introduction, if you will, um, because I had never been with the team for, for that amount of time and especially traveling together and, and going to two very different places. Um, it, was, it was cool and kind of being able to, to sit by the pool on Tuesday with the mechanics and the engineers and play ping pong and, and kind of just have a laugh in, in a very relaxed environment was good. And I think that will just benefit me even more down the road in the future as I continue my, pro my progress with the team. I caught up with team principal Cyril Abitable, who told me where he sees KHM F1 team. So we're back from the first two races of the season. Uh, we knew they would be uh, remote, far away and difficult, and they were far and difficult as we were expecting. But we think that we managed uh, those two races uh, the best we, we could. Um, the first thing that we managed to extract is a two race finish for the two drivers, uh, for, for each of them. Um, so, which is a good result because uh, each race was uh, were happening in tricky conditions. Though not everyone managed to complete those two races, and we are amongst the drivers who, and the teams were accumulated the, the biggest mileage, and it's also useful because we are still in the process of gathering information uh, to learn about our car and also to make decisions for the development of this car. Um, so that we, we accomplished that. I think both drivers also managed to uh, find their feet and find their position in the team to settle, to improve in terms of procedures, because for both of them it was new things. Uh, everything to learn for, for Guido in terms of race procedures, start, etc. For Charles this was about knowing his team, because Guido was familiar to the team, but uh, Charles is new to the team. Uh, Kers and, Eng and Renault Engine are both new to Charles, and again, that's not something that's straightforward. So both of them have made huge progress, I have to say, on a daily basis, uh, also in terms of communication and sort of feedbacks that we have from them in order to improve uh, the understanding of the car. So that's clearly something that um, is a very good deliverable from those two races. Um, we knew it would be difficult. It's been difficult. Uh, I have to say that the team was really done after the first practice session uh, in the first race in Melbourne. Uh, we were expected to be a bit behind Marochia, to be honest, uh, the gap was bigger than we were expecting. 
but I think that it was not totally representative of the exact reality of the car and of the package. Uh, this may be the, the colder condition in Melbourne where um, we are fitting Marussia better than us and we see that in outer conditions, which are representative of the F1 season, uh, we see that we are not far at all. Um, we see that potentially we could have raced them uh, directly in, uh, in uh, Malaysia uh, in race two. Um, so that's something that is quite encouraging as we are uh, preparing the package that will come onto the car in Bahrain and right after in Barcelona. Um, so two, two races back to back will bring uh, some part on the car which we think will give us definitely an edge uh, over Marussia. And we also noticed that uh, other teams are not that far from, uh, from us and from Marussia, so it's also encouraging because if we are able to deliver a good job, not only should we also uh, overtake again in the classification Marussia, but potentially get close to uh, this famous midfield which we've been chasing since three years. Um, so it's very encouraging. Um, it's um, two races that were far in difficult conditions, very cold at the start for the first one, very hot for the second one, so the team also has been uh, struggling and suffering to some extent of those conditions. Uh, so it's good to have a, a big break right now uh, and we'll be enjoying that whilst the factory is uh, gearing up to also make the repair because we, we smashed quite a few parts. I think we, we're coming back with four uh, front wing legs and we've been uh, going to the races. So it's about that to repair plus the new parts as per the new specification to prepare. So it's very busy here in, uh, in the field and it's good to be back. Follow us each week for a look at what's been happening behind the scenes throughout the year at Caterham F1. And remember to keep up to date with all the latest action. Hit the like button, drop your comments in the box below and subscribe.